I may have been out of the loop just a little bit over the course of the last week with our hunt in West Virginia, but I did not miss the news of the addition of Brown Bear to the Transylvania map. So I don't think this hunt needs much introduction. We are going to head out and hopefully we can get our first Brown Bear today. And in a bit of an unexpected twist, the first thing we encounter is a group of Mouflon and I'm gonna say because they have a spotted, Probably this one-star adult will be a just fine one to take out. Try to slot that shot in there. I forgot just how good the 308 is on stuff like that. I think we get so used to hunting deer specifically over on Nesper's Valley that these guys, which are quite a bit smaller, are just a, a little easier to bring down with that gun. But let's grab that guy. Still probably only our third or fourth Mouflon ever. Ended up being double lung, and he was a 63%. No big deal, good one to take out then. Not that bad, it might... Sadly, it might be our best move on that we've shot, but... That apparently does something for the encyclopedia. I'm not sure what. Maybe that's to do with the update. And there we go. Our first ever brown bear is a one-star young. Now, I really do wonder, because they weren't spawning initially, are they all going to be one-star youngs, or... Will there be like a, a variety of ages and star ratings? It's hard to say, but he's kind of maybe turning a little bit there. We may have a really brief shot window. And we may have gotten that. I really wasn't going to take that shot, but quite honestly, from my experience trying to get black bears over on Nez Perce Valley, when you get that close, it's really easy for it to not exactly go well. What I'm seeing there is all female sound analysis. That might be a good sign. I mean, where we hit him should have been high lung. We'll run down here and look. And if I'm not mistaken, that is a pretty good sign over there. That's a blood trail we can see from probably darn near 100 yards away, at least up on the far end. So. I'm pretty sure it's a good shot. I actually never did find the initial impact, but Dink Blood, Air Bubbles, he will be somewhere at the end of this blood trail. In fact, he is laying right there. It looks like he got to the top of the hill and then maybe fell backwards. That's pretty cool. So hopefully this wasn't a case of a really high genetic potential brown bear. And to be honest, a little unfortunate. I wanted to get a decent picture with our first bear. I mean, they do look pretty good. Maybe we can somehow make this work just with like the head and neck, because laying like that's not what I was expecting. I mean, I guess that'll work. We'll get with that before something weird happens and he flips over, because you can see he's kind of still moving around there. And I believe that's because he did sort of ragdoll down the hill. But let's see what we have for our first ever bear. It was high in the left lung, so kind of as expected. I did think we were a touch farther back, but he was walking forward. Not too bad then. From the 300, he didn't run that far. Like, I feel like from the black bears that we've shot, usually I actually track them further. He was a 61% uh, one-star male, though, so pretty good deal. I do like that they're kind of that lighter coloration, almost like what you'd expect out of a blonde black bear, for instance, for that color. But that is a 400-pound bear, which I will be intrigued to see just how big they get. I would assume five stars are probably upwards of a thousand pounds or thereabouts, but 352 credits, not a ton for a bear, but that also kind of plays into what I'm saying with thinking they're going to get really big. You got to keep the market price fairly low if you're shooting ones that are close to a thousand pounds. Otherwise, it's going to be a ton of money every time you shoot one. So two things based on that. Number one, we know there was another brown bear, that female, which I don't really intend to shoot. If we happen to see it, we may anyway. But because there were two, there must be a zone somewhere down there. And I may go and try to find that. I can't see that other one standing up there anywhere. So probably that's what we'll do. Even if we don't find it, at least we kind of know. Northeast corner, not a bad spot for the bears. And by the way, at least I think, the blood trail is going to stay. So we can actually backtrack him to where we shot him. And then kind of wander around and see if we can get a zone that way. Even with that, though, I'm not seeing any kind of zone. Now, it is currently just about 7 p.m. Assuming that brown bears are the same as black bear, and I couldn't check until we 
either got his own or shot one, to enter them into our encyclopedia. Yeah, they drink 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. They would have been feeding, given the time that we encountered them, but it could be the case. I actually don't know if they don't change zones until it hits that time, or if they start to move and get to the new zone location at the time that the, the new zone starts. I'm really not sure, but they, they could have been on the move. Maybe that's why there's no zone visible. Either way, though, went ahead and rested back to early morning, and I'm sure I'm far from the first to notice this, but I really like the deer hoof coat hanger right inside the door here at the cabin in the northeast. That's kind of a, a neat little thing I haven't seen anywhere else. Now, while we're here, another thing I wanted to do was go over here and try to find our four-star fallow and just kind of see if he has maybe aged. We have passed another day since going out and getting the brown bear, and at least so far, I don't think he's in with these ones. Now, that two-star adult's pretty encouraging, and I'm not sure what the one to the left is. It must have been a one-star, but not sure if it's young or adult. That is a young. Could very well be the respawn from the adult that we shot down here last time, so there must be, assuming this is the right herd, more fallow in here with them. They're walking, I believe, down to their drink zone, so maybe if we just kind of stay here? Actually, they are right there. Got a one-star young there. The question is, is he in there, or has he maybe died of old age like our whitetail? They're all the way up into there. That's not a buck. That is going to be the right one. It looked really big. Don't know if it is four or five stars, though. And walking through the trees, I'm not 100% sure that we're going to get to know anytime soon. I mean, my guess is they probably drank down here at the creek. But I'd prefer not to lose sight of them. He is still a four star. That is insane for how big he is. At least we know. And we may try to hang with them and, and see if there's another one worth taking out. I really hope he gets there one of these days. I thought the Whitetail were going to make it, and they didn't. So I don't want to get too overconfident with the Fallow, but he sure looks good as a four. As much as I hate to just kind of leave a herd and not do anything to influence the genetics, the last herd really didn't have any obvious ones to take out. The four star obviously we want to wait on. They can get the 16 years as a mature, so there's a lot of room in there still to age and maybe get to five stars. The youngs look symmetric enough that there was no obvious indication of subpar genetics, and I thought instead we'd come over here to this herd and maybe we can try to get that one star adult there. So, tough angle. It's almost one that I'd think about going for the 300, but is right at the zero range, roughly at 216 yards. So I think we'll just try to put this sort of center of the chest. I'd say that'll do you to bring him down. And I did want to see as well that three star mature and just kind of confirm that he was still around. So at least we got a fallow deer, not the same herd that I was hoping to get and not the five star that I was really hoping could maybe cap off a pretty cool hunt in just getting our first brown bear. But encouraging enough there, and I should also note, as I've been moving around on the west side of the map, no brown bear sounds, no brown bear zones, tracks, trails, anything like that. So I think for whatever remaining time we have, we'll probably head back east and see if we can find any more over in there. I was curious as well as checking on that fallow and trying to make sure that it did not die of old age without us seeing what it turned into. I thought it would be worth seeing if any brown bears were over here. And at least from everywhere I went, it doesn't seem like they're anywhere near as common as over on the other side. But then, fingers crossed here on this guy, doesn't look as bad up close, definitely fairly even, so hopefully he's not a really high potential one star, but we actually got him directly in the heart. I was hoping for that, but not necessarily aiming for that, so that certainly works that well. Because we shot him front on, there really wasn't enough bullet energy left by the time that it hit the heart, at least as far as like what's recommended. Still enough to kill him with the artery damage and the lung hit though, and he was a 74%, so good deal, good one to take out. I always assume like if there's a 3 or a 4 star in a herd, it's probably good to try to work on those genetics while that one's still there, and maybe influence whatever comes back from that, but let's jump back east. I still never purchased access to this area, maybe we should just do that. I think that'd be a good idea. We'll buy that. I had planned on, on both maps trying to unlock one area via missions, 
Then on Nesper's Valley, we had the Five Star Bighorn that we had to buy access to get to, and at that point, I figured we should just go ahead and go to some of this unexplored territory. Well, that didn't take very long. Got another One Star Young, which kind of goes to maybe help confirm the idea of maybe it being a kind of initial spawn thing. Probably shouldn't have just yeeted shots like that, but I mean, why not? That one will be fine. I'm, I'm very confident in that shot, but I don't know what happened on the mail. Kind of just went for that. Maybe it'll get him. And as expected, the female was hit very well. Pink blood with the medium amount of blood. The male, though, I want to make sure we mark before we go off and start tracking the female. I could hear him still running with the, the sound analysis going up through the trees, so not the most encouraging, but we really did not shoot them that far apart. Probably not the best sign that I can't just find the blood, but maybe the hunter sense will help us get there. That looks a little less encouraging. Now, I don't think this is the initial blood spot. I think that's the second shot. He was already bleeding though from red blood. I honestly have no idea if two poor shots may take them down. They should run roughly in the same direction. So we'll get on the trail of the female, see if that kind of leads us over there towards the male. And hopefully we don't end up doing that again. I don't know if that was a little bit of just having not played for a while and thinking I could go for those shots, but at least we got the female. And in the end, that will kind of help us out. So that is an indication of a brown bear feed zone. And I think actually over in here even is that as well. So we can just click this and go ahead and identify it. That way we'll know it's here or red deer and brown bear feed right in the same location. That also is useful. That though probably is not the best sign. I would certainly say then the male is going to survive that. We may be able to find him. We'll try. But I wanted to analyze this zone so we have it, and we'll kind of pay attention roughly to where we get the last sound analysis from him. Looks like he's heading south-southeast, basically. So we'll put a marker down, try to get close-ish to where we think he's going to go. And I didn't even realize we ran right past our female, so at least we got that. I would say it ran a similar distance to the male that we shot earlier. A little bit better maybe for a picture. I wonder if the females are always a little bit darker or if there's a little bit of uh, variance. I think if it wasn't for that brush, we could do really well, but we can probably make this work. Actually, though, it's probably not all that much better. I did notice. Pretty cool to see the claws there as it's laying there. I wonder if all bears end up kind of falling like that. Maybe if we get to go and get the male steel, we can find out. But left lung kind of on the move. We were low, which is interesting because we actually were zeroed, I think, at 218 still. So I guess we just aimed too low, barely got the lung, but it was enough to bring it down. I feel like they do look a little bit darker, but maybe it was just the lighting when we shot this one versus the last one. Can sell that, and well, the hope that we can run into the mail, I know we went up in that direction, is probably going to come down to him maybe, you know, breaking a twig or something as he walks around and kind of alerting us to his presence. I think he's going to be tough to spot up in the forest. Now there is one thing we could try, I'm pretty sure that should be the same bear, about 200 yards away. The wind isn't that great, but if we kind of get ourselves into position, we could use the, I think it's a jackrabbit collar. It does attract basically every species of predator, and since just recently we unlocked the higher level calls, we could potentially call in a brown bear, so maybe we try that? I have not even attempted calling in a wounded animal, but since the state says calm, I'm guessing that'll work the same. I want to get to where we can see, and then maybe we'll give that a shot. I mean, we can see down into there probably well enough. I don't want to push it too far with the wind being bad and end up spooking him, so we need to swap this to the distress squeak. Now let's see what happens. I've been super slowly kind of just scooching to the side. Because I kind of think maybe from the edge of this path right here might be the best visibility we'll get. But with the little arrow in the thick part of the white line, I want to do that again. And that should basically generate the maximum attraction. I think actually it does, for animals that will respond, make it most likely for them to call back. I don't assume a bear is going to. But we do know, as long as you sit still, 
and I'm also getting pretty close. Even with the wind being bad, now that we can sit still, we can just watch this big old guy come in. That is pretty neat. That's gonna have to be a thing. I assume any fitness level bear will come into this, so maybe that could be a neat way to try to get one. Do we just hit him in the head or go for like a heart shot when his head is up? We'll see if he will offer such a shot. Getting pretty close though. Probably kind of onto us, but that'll work. Please don't roll over. Might be able to get a decent picture if he doesn't fall. We'll try to make it quick. Well, if he wasn't trying to play peekaboo or something, we'd be in good shape, but that is exactly what that looks like, so... I mean, I guess it's still probably the best we've had. Can try to get past that little bit of grass. He's kind of sliding quick, which we have seen, even when they're not sliding. They can just kind of seemingly for no reason just fall over. I don't think from the side it's going to be any better. I mean, maybe like that is a little better. I don't know. We can go with that and take a look. I don't want to shoot any more of these guys till we find one that's older in age, which probably we need to give them a little bit of time to actually age. Ended up, though, hitting him in the spine. If we would have used the 338, that probably would have dropped him. So not as bad as I thought, honestly. We were... I don't know what that range... If we were zeroed for the right distance, maybe we get him top of the lungs. Second shot was not even remotely close, which is kind of to be expected. Third shot, though, ended up, interestingly enough, being way too low and hitting him in the stomach. That might be the least expected result out of the three, but he was a 50% male, so another good one, I'd say, to take out. We can sell that, and hopefully we don't make any more rush decisions and just start throwing shots at random bears that run off, but I guess the good news is don't really intend to shoot any more bears the rest of the hunt. We got a halfway decent photo, got to take a cl close look at them, and I think most importantly, did not end up shooting one that was a really high percentage. So if there are any on our map from what I'm kind of assuming is like an initial spawn of bears now, they should have the chance to get there. Now, there were zones and trails and stuff from the beginning, from the release of the game, but because there were just no bears in the game, I don't think they could have been sitting there aging like invisible or just, you know, not not spawning. I'm pretty sure everything is a fresh spawn, just based on the fact that the three that we've seen have all been young bears. And right on cue, we do have a herd of roe deer out here. I think there are three bucks, and the one star adult I think is going to be one that we can take out. So we'll try to do that, but we actually have kind of succeeded in accomplishing a couple different goals today. One being, of course, getting to see the brown bear, but check on the fallow and confirming that he is still around, and also getting to just pass some time and hopefully start to make progress on some of those brown bears getting to actually age. I didn't really realize how long it took to end up tracking down that male, but I'm glad we got it so it's not one that we end up finding later, and obviously at 50%, it was one that needed to ultimately be taken out anyway, but it's kind of double incentive to come back here to Transylvania. One, we know there's a couple fallow which maybe have a shot at getting close to five stars, if not reaching five stars. And passing time and hunting is the only way to see if they'll get there. And it kind of goes the same for the brown bear. Because they're all probably basically the minimum age right now, we want to get out and just go for hunts for other things to give them a chance to actually reach their potential. But as for this guy, high shot barely into the left lung. Not the best, but it'll work. He was an 85%. I thought he was pretty decent for a one star, but one star adult normally is safe to take. So at least we have that. And I am quite looking forward to coming back out here. Whether it is for fallow deer, roe deer, red deer, just something to pass some time, give the brown bear a chance, and hopefully one day we can see a five star brown bear. One thing I am very curious about is the max age for them. I didn't look at that when we checked the zones before. They will get to 27 years. I do want to check. Black Bear is still the same at 39 as the max, which is an insane number. So it should be a little quicker for Brown Bear to start to reach that peak age. But even still, it's going to take some time. So coming back out into Transylvania for other hunts is going to be key in giving ourselves a shot at that. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.